Good morning, folks. Today we've got a number of top stories and a rundown of the major geophysical events of the day as well. We're starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun with brightness incoming from the limb, coronal holes and plasma filaments as well. Solar wind is calm along with geomagnetism, but we've got a lot to watch up there on our star right now. Folks, they've been evacuating this Caribbean island for fears of a volcanic eruption, and they had two yesterday. Excellent shots of the eruption plume coming out of the local seismic monitoring agency there, but the more incredible shots are coming from satellite. One puff, and then, as the day wore on into evening, another larger and longer-lasting eruption. On the CO2 release detector, we saw the first eruption barely outpaced the background readings, but the second one was much more fervent of a release. How about some good luck? Nobody was hurt as this tornado took out this house in Mississippi. Water vapor loop here with the lightning overlay shows how in the evening hours the system lit up like crazy in the Gulf states. Prayers to all of those who were affected there. The top seismic events of the last day struck Indonesia and the Philippines, and both of those events were blot echoes. Let's get a quick bit of eye candy as we go to our science stories. This is M61, and in this combined Hubble and ESO shot, we not only get the grand spiral, but the pink glows of star-forming regions, qualifying this as a starburst galaxy. Let's go to the articles, and first up is the rarer kind of pre-seismic anomaly. While there is no question as to the electrodynamic and blot echo methods of seismic forecasting, one of the best in situ local measures is radon release. Here we've got about the 30th such anomaly reported prior to a significant seismic event. Up next, we're heading back out to space for a look into space material that is organized into a filament. If you have seen our plasma cosmology movie, hopefully you recall the discussion of extinct discharges or off-cycle currents like lightning in space forming those filaments and their fingering offshoots. Well, they've traced those fingers and the axis current in the heart of the integral-shaped filament in Orion A, and yeah, I'd say that qualifies as what I was talking about in the movie. We are not far off from there as we come back to the upcoming EGU meeting. Another that will be worth the admission is their look at current sheets and space plasmas two humps to this camel as it not only helps solidify the more complex dynamics of the system, which Alfane demanded in the plasma cosmology, but it also helps us understand the character of the galactic current sheet in the mid-plane plasma of the galaxy. Now last but not least, our final share from the upcoming EGU meeting and probably the second most important one we've shown all week. They not only confirm the hyperactive magnetic field instability paradigm during eras long ago, but tie it to the major biological crises that struck Earth during that time, many of which do show evidence of being a direct result of the weaker magnetic field strength. Whether it was millions of years ago, the more recent excursions of Lechamp and Gothenburg, or the one unfolding now as the cycle resets, it's a major problem, a crisis, for everything living here. We greatly appreciate your support. Our book on the catastrophe is at otf.cells.com. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org. Our Fly on the Wall podcast is coming up today, and in it we'll officially declare what's pretty obvious to everyone now. Agenda 21 kicked in exactly when they planned it to. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.